Hello everyone, this is Peter, goodyreader.com, two tablets here, I'm going to tell you what's different, what's the same. On the left, Amazon Kindle Fire HD X 8.9, on the right, Kobo Arc 10 HD, 8.9 inch, 10 inch, different resolutions, different cameras, all that kind of fun stuff. Look below in the description for all of the specs while you follow along. We're going to dive right in here. What we see here are the different OS's. This is the more conventional Android-esque experience. You can drag and drop your icons on a multitude of pages. You also have Kobo's main home hub here where it shows you all the good stuff. All the books and all the magazines and Mike's face here. And then we have our little categories here where we have magazines, books, want to read, and even a test category we made called this. They both have drop downs from the top. You can configure your Wi-Fi. Oh, hey, Mike. He's still there. And we can configure a multitude of different things. The home screen on the Kindle is a little bit different. You have a carousel. You don't really have a gridded view with pages, the conventional Android-esque experience on the Kindle. It's a skinned version of Android called Mojito. You have a little bit of a viewing area here. You can kind of hide that. You have a bar up top with the respective categories, shop, games, apps, books, music, videos, etc. We're going to dive right into a book. Let's open up a couple books here, uh, shall we? We shall, everyone says. So what we're going to do is we're not so much showing you guys the functionality of the book. If you want to see that, you can go to our review videos. We're just going to show you what they look, how they look different. So we're going to max both of these out as far as they will go. It looks like that is about as close as it'll go on the Kobo. It's kind of strange. Whereas on the Kindle, our maxed out view is very close like this. But because the Kobo won't go full blast, we're going to try to match these. There we go. Looking at these side by side, you can tell they're different. This is very white or white for you Americans. And this is very black, whereas this, the background's kind of gray. Honestly, it is kind of gray. And we don't even have a theme or anything going because we are on classic. If we were on sepia, you'd see that. Or night. Or classic. So it's actually a little bit different than the Kindle. Page turns are very smooth on both of them. This kind of has like a little peak animation. This one just kind of gets the job done and switches. You can actually download Amazon Kindle Reader on this via Google Play Store, Goody Reader App Store, and so forth. This is Google Play certified, this is not. Brief, ever so brief explanation on what all this is. You have highlights, notes, Facebook share, social media, dictionary, etc. Once again, we're not going to spend six minutes showing you how to read on the book. This is just showing you the differences between the two. Let's get away from all our previous highlights. Kindle has X-Ray. Kobo has Beyond the Book. They both pretty much go beyond the book. This goes... Well, actually, this is kind of beyond the book. This is away from the book, and we'll tell you why. What X-Ray is, is a system that allows you to organize people, things, terms throughout the book, mentioned throughout the book, and you can kind of quick jump to them. For example, if you don't know what Oxford was when they were mentioning it, it's mentioned six or seven times throughout the book. You can click on that, and you can see where it's been mentioned. You can jump to that particular section. Boom. Kobo does it a little bit differently. They show you key items and terms, like if you don't know what runes were, they'll tell you what runes are. So give you a little bit of explanation, related titles, all that kind of stuff. Who the author is, you can click on her and read about what she says, and little notes that other people wrote. Hopefully there's no spoilers. So this is pretty much the reading experience. Let us look at a comic book via or via Marvel. We'll look at the same comic book. No, we will not continue. It looks like Mike is off reading it on the iPad mini right now. It wants us to sync. No, we're doing a review. So as you can see, much larger, 10 inch, 8.9. We will go to a couple pages here, just so you guys get an idea. This is rather dark, even though we have the brightness maxed out. 
still kind of a little bit darker than the Kindle. And we've even turned off automatic brightness. So, yeah. So here's a good picture. Let's do some pinching and a zooming. There we go. All right, fine. I'll follow you. Kobo doesn't zoom in that far, actually, whereas the Kindle zooms in very far. They're both handling it very differently, although they were downloaded from different places. This was downloaded from the Goody Reader App Store because it's not available on the Amazon App Store. This was downloaded from Google Play. Even though you can't zoom in very close on this, because it's such a big screen, you actually can read it pretty well. It's like kind of reading a regular comic book, because comic books are usually kind of this big, actually, now that I look at it. You can go panel by panel. The screen on the Kindle is more glossy, feels really nice on your fingertip. The screen on the Kobo has a little bit more friction, so you get caught a lot. Not the biggest fan of that. Although it's great quality and the resolution is killer. So this is the comic book experience. We are now going to open our favorite newspaper reading app, Press Reader. Where are you? There you are. And open up a couple newspapers. As it stands, they're not very readable, even with a big screen like a 10 inch and a big screen like an 8.9. They're not very readable. You can do a couple things here. You can pinch and zoom. It's kind of inconvenient because as you read, you're going to have to scroll down and get to the bottom and scroll all the way up. You can kind of get around this. If you see that we have lots of, let's get out of here. There we go. We have lots of light blue highlighted titles. You can go ahead and click on any one of those. And what this does is strips away all the photos except for a couple select thumbnails and just gives you the articles. No watch ads, no, sud no Sudokus. No, no uh, crosswords, all that kind of stuff. Just the articles. You can change the text on both of them. Pretty much the exact same. And you can long press as well to get a couple other features. Like so. And if you want to go back, click on page view. It goes right back to it. And you see we have all the ads here. Flyporter.com, all your little flight ads. Halt ran for oh Black Friday. Today's Black Friday, guys. What do I think of these two tablets side by side? Of course it all does come down to you guys, but if I had to say, seeing that we've reviewed about I don't know, seven hundred and fifty videos here, I would say that they're both pretty much the same price. Three ninety nine, three ninety nine, exact same price. The Kindle feels a lot better in your hand. It's very light. It's the perfect size. Fits in your side bag, satchel, whatever you wear. The screen is great. It's very smooth and glossy. No screen protector really needed. Everything's very smooth. The Kobo, your finger feels like it's dragging on the screen. Like there's way too much friction all the time. And it gets very, very fingerprinty really quickly. It's also very heavy. Speaker quality, as you just heard on our Netflix video there. The quality on... Man, it's it's tough to call. They're both very high resolution. And what's even more amazing is that the Kobo has a 10-inch screen, which is bigger. Usually on smaller screens, the pixels get compressed. Resolution gets compressed and naturally looks better. If you're looking at a video on a uh, iPod Nano, it's going to look really good because it's super compressed. You can't tell all the pixels. I think they're pretty much on par for video quality and audio quality. Hands down, it's the Kindle. The speakers are crisp, they're clear, they're loud, they're great. I think the Kindle has a lot of great features like Mayday, allows you to speak with a customer service representative any time of the day, 24 hours a day, to get help live with your device. But I like how the Kobo is Google Play certified. You will have to download things from Google, uh, the Goody Reader App Store or the Amazon App Store, which doesn't have a whole lot of apps. And a lot of the apps are not the ones you'd really 
we, 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 you would really look for. For example, we were looking for Marvel and couldn't find it. Only Comixology was available. It all comes down to you guys. Check out our reviews of each of these individually. Check out the comparison as you have here. Really pause on those times when we pinch and zoomed and looked at the comic books and ebooks. Really see which one you like more. Remember, this has 3.7 million books available on the Kobo store. This has about 1. This is about 2 million on the Kindle store. They both do audio. They both have speakers. They both have great screens. They both have cameras. They both do a lot of stuff. And they both allow you to sideload apps as well. To me, that's the most important because for partial app developers, we like to sideload our own stuff. It leaves everything a lot more flexible unlike barnes and noble that kind of restricts you leave it up to you guys i am rambling on check out our youtube channel youtube.com slash goody reader 750 plus videos and for all the other information you go to goodyreader.com for all the latest reviews previews interviews and all other pretty much everything to do with e-readers tablets and digital publishing and for goody reader this is peter everyone have a great day Thanks.